Welcome. It's round six of season six of the Apex Online GT3 Championship in a set of course of competizione. Next round will be at Kailami in South Africa. But before we get there, let's have a quick recap of the previous round at Imola. Incredibly tight race. Fodor qualified on pole, followed by Cooley in second place on the grid. But all the drivers within a couple of seconds of each other pace very quick and very close on this circuit. But on the opening lap, it was Fodor and Cooley that moved clear of the rest of the field. But on the fourth lap in, both the leaders caught up with the Jamie Ellis, who must have been through the pits. It was a lap down already. Fodor slightly stumbled over Jamie Ellis as he tried to go past. Cooley did not need asking twice and stole through to steal the lead of the race. A lead he did not relinquish really until the finish. Everybody's pace was very, very close at uh, Imola, so the only way it seemed anybody managed to get past was if the other drivers made a mistake. An example here from Kera, many drivers did this. Got a little bit too much curb going through Tamburello. Lost speed and was immediately swamped by cars that were really, really close to him. Three cars attempted to go through there for one tiny mistake, and it was like that for the entire field. Anytime anybody made a slight stumble, there were two or three cars waiting to pounce on the opportunity to get through. Kulic still leading at the end of the 19th lap, and that's when he pitted. At this point, Fodor had already pitted, was down in fifth, so a race was on to see if Kulic could complete his pit stop, get out in front. Becker, who's directly behind Kulik, pitted two, and that promoted Dami Ayo into first place. Dami Ayo taking a leaf from the Nils Nins book, perhaps, going long to ensure he gets a moment of glory at the front of the race. But just as we were coming towards the end of the race on the 28th lap, it was Fodor who made a very strange mistake going through the Villeneuve chicane. He was in second place at this point, just veered straight off the track and directly into the wall, causing significant damage to the front of his Audi. And that was to cost him dear towards the end of the race. Fodor was in a great position. Just a few seconds down on Cooley when he had the accident. But the damage to the Audi was significant and the pace was so tight that if he pitted for repairs, he'd lose. He'd go right to the back of the field. And consequently, was passed by car after car, leading into the end of the race. First, Ziga went through, and then Hatter. Next, it was Bajil. Passing him on the start, finish straight. And into Tamburello. Next one up was XFSR Torpedo. Same place. But uh, perhaps driver of the day was Kangset. Got into this collision with Baker right at the beginning of the race, went right down the field. By the pit stop, had worked his way back up to six from almost last. Dropping down to 15th on the 18th lap following the pit stops. But by the end of the race, he'd caught up with Fodor and overtook him to get into sixth place. Remarkable driver, it was Cooley who brought home the victory. Another 100 point haul towards the Drivers' Championship. And it was eager who carried it over the line in second. And Hatter came home in third place. So looking at the Drivers' Championship coming away from Imola, Matt Cooley of McVitie's Hobnobs with his victory takes 100 points and moves 107 points clear. In second place, Wilfred Bajil. Wilfred moving three places up the table with a very good fourth. Ivor Kangset, following that remarkable drive from virtually the back of the field to finish six, moves himself seven places up the Drivers' Championship. Luca Ziga of the 488 team moves up three places into fourth. Hendrik Sauras didn't finish the race, so he drops down three places into fifth. Ben Hitchcock, the other 488 team driver, he moves down three places into sixth. John Becker, of the FTW Racing, the RacingSynTools.com moved up two places into seventh place. Robert Fodor dropped down four places to eighth. Jason Dyer was unable to participate again this week, drops down to ninth on the table. And neither did Paul Hinsley, who drops down into tenth place. Looking at the team's championship, it seems to be breaking into two halves, really. Metvitis Hobnobs 
still in the front, Matt Cooley and Tripp with the 475 points. But right behind them it's the 488 team, Lucas Zieger and Ben Hitchcock have just 20 points behind with just two rounds to go. In third place it's FTW Racing, RacingSimTools.com, Dan Smith, John Becker, 350 points, they are starting to fall behind a little bit, they've got a 104 point gap. In fourth place it's Big Boatley with Paul Hinsley and Paul Scott with 240 points, but uh, those drivers appear to have dropped off the roster of late, so they will only continue to move down the table if neither driver can make an appearance in the final two rounds. In fifth place it's Beeswax Racing, Nils Nins and Steve Bezik having decent results at Imola, we put them on to 204 points. In 6th place it's TWG Racing, Dami Ayo had a very good result at Imola. Sindri Ragnarsson was a bit further down the field, but the team have 184 points, moving them ahead this week of Phoenix Racing. Phoenix Racing, Lord Nem and Radomir Kozierski have 139 points, leaving them just ahead of Merckx and Recreation. As well as Amiglas and Andre Kucha rounding out the team's championship table. It's moving on to tonight's round. As you can see in the background, Kailami will be a night race, but despite this, and it's incredibly hot, the uh, air temperature 29 degrees and the track temperature remaining at 29 degrees. Qualifying on pole, Matt Cooley of Vitis Hobnobs with a time of 141.6. Alongside him, Marcin Oljars. On row two, Hendrik Sarwas again in the Honda NSX alongside Rob Fodor, who was very unfortunate last week at Imola. He'll be hoping to make amends for that this time round. Row three, Dami Ayo, who had a very good result, qualified well in fifth place for TWG Racing alongside Brandon Baker. Row four, Conal McCarthy alongside Luca Ziga of the 488 team. Row five is Jamie Ellis alongside Kevin Ronseng. Row 6 is James Fresh alongside the other McVitie's Hobnobs driver, Trip. Row 7 in 13th place, Wilfred Bajil, who would be a little bit further down than he would like considering his position in the Drivers' Championship just in 2nd place at the moment, alongside Sindri Regnison of TWG Racing. Row 8, Pablo Loro alongside Nils Nins of Beeswax Racing. Row 9, John Becker of FTW Racing, RacingSimTools.com alongside Ben Hitchcock of the 488 team. Row 10 to Jordan Watson alongside Rob Jackson. Row 11, Master of Dirt alongside Dan Smith of FTW Racing, RacingSimTools.com. Row 12 is Andre Kuchar of Merckx and Recreation alongside Domagod Tonzatik. Row 13, Matt O'Brien alongside XFSR Torpedo. Uh, Torpedo a long way down on his usual qualifying position. Still only 1.7 seconds off pole. And the last driver to be just within two seconds on row 14 in position 27, Steve Bezik of Beeswax Racing. Uh, alongside, Carol Pequera. Row 15 is Lord Nam of Phoenix Racing alongside Oras Ruszczak. Row 16, Adam Bowers alongside Daniel Oppenheisen and on row 17 is Radomir Kozierski of Phoenix Racing alongside Ivor Kangser. Ivor Kangser at the back of the field this time round. Really bad qualifying from Ivor. He's not normally that far down the field so I wonder what's gone wrong for him this week. So we join the field for the main race just as they set off. The lights have gone green. Coming up to the first real corner, the wide left-hander that tightens up considerably, Crowthorn. And there's a number of collisions already in the main bunch. They are scattered across the track. The rest of the drivers move up towards the big left-hander of Barbecue. And then he's on to short straight towards the sweeping right-hander of Sunset. Tracks, warm conditions, meaning that tyre management will be a factor for this race. Around the uh, tightening left-hander of Clubhouse, another short straight then. It's in towards the S's. The driver start climbing up towards the cop. Cop very difficult to get the brake in right. Tight hairpin to the left. 
then you begin the descent down towards the mine shaft. Turn of the mine shaft just underneath the overhead gantry. Nice open left hander leads up to a tight right hander of the crocodiles. And it's hard over to the left for a super difficult cheetah. Super huge sausage curb on the inside of Cheetah, which will throw many a car into the gravel trap off to the left. And it's around the hairpin of Ingwit and over the start finish line to start the next lap. Looking in detail, Cooley away in first place on the opening lap. But Loro's picked up a drive through penalty straight away, so he must have been out of position for the start to incur that penalty. And on the opening lap, as they come through the crocodiles, there's an incident. And Nils Nins of Beeswax Racing ends up pointing the wrong way. And there's cars all over the track. And that looked like uh, an, ass, an Audi gone right off into the dirt of Rob Jackson. But most of the drivers through safely. But wait, some will have incurred damage with uh, impacts there. We're only into lap three. Sawas, you just see Trip there going through the picture in the Bentley. Sawas, a little bit of a distance behind him, but something must happen because Trip's suddenly going very, very slowly as both Sawas and Fodor go past him. Trip dropping down two places there from seventh into ninth. Sawas must have had a bad start. It's starting fourth place. In lap four, there's Jordan Watson this time lining up to try and take get past Trip. So Trip having a very difficult start to the race, catches a lot of dirt there. Watson had to go wide to avoid him, but goes through. So Watson into ninth and Trip going backwards down the field, not really wanting this early on in the race. A lot of drivers seem to struggle to stay on the track at Kailami. Very difficult track, must be a slippy surface. On lap five, it's Dan Smith being caught by James Fresh and a car just in front of Dan there seemed to catch the dirt there's Fresh behind the Lexus but he's going to get down the inside so have a good look he's too far behind to make that one stick and it looks like Dan Smith hangs on to that place lap six and he trip being mentioned again and trips this time in the dirt lots and lots of cars going past him Some trips horrible start to Kailami GT3 round gets worse he started well up the field but at the moment he's showing 14th on the computer could be further down than that that's a Nissan behind him so I think he is further down On lap eight, Rob Fodor being attacked by Jamie Ellis. So Fodor well up the field. Jamie was well off the track then, so Rob gets through. I think they'll leave Rob in fifth place. Lap now, it was Lord Nem being attacked by Connell McCarthy in the Audi. Connell's had a difficult season, but this time qualified very well. He's dropped a long way down the field though, so he must have had a difficult opening lap. Massively outpaces the Aston Martin then of Lord Nem. Straight through. So McCarthy showing some pace this week, and we wanted to use that to get much further up the field as we go through sunset. Well clear of the Aston Martin of Lord Nem. Pick up Nils Nins and McCarthy. Oh, and they come together. And Nins gets spun out. Looked like a little tap then. McCarthy is doing the horrible thing and waiting for him, but that will cost them both dear now. They'll both drop right down the field. Nils obviously got himself to blame for getting Please No Ponterino added to his rear wing. Seemed to turn him into an open target in this race. I think he got hit three times. And I've no doubt he deserved every single one of them. 
Lap 11 and Oppenheiser being attacked by Adam Bowers. Oppenheiser, Mercedes, Ferrari there, Bowers. Shot across the track, looks like it had a little trouble with grip. So they're side by side. Oppenheisen's got in front before the S's. Makes that work. So Oppenheisen up into 19th place, uh, 18th place. Bowers pushed down to 19th. On a lap 13, Pablo Loro. We'll have a look at a bit further on. Coming up on Steve Bezik of Beeswax Racing. Let's come up towards sunset. Loro's on the outside. I think uh, the Beeswax Racing car was thinking more about the long term rather than trying to fight and lose time. So the Ferrari goes through of Loro into 10th place and then the 833 car of Beeswax Racing down to 11th. But on lap 13, it's Jamie Ellis again in the Nissan GTR being attacked by Sarwas who's well out of position from his qualifying but he's got all the way back up to 5th. Jamie Ellis is in 4th so Sarwas up the inside on the first proper corner. Makes that one look easy so Sarwas back into 4th. Ellis pushed down to 5th but still in a good position. Lap 17, Marcin Oljars. Dropped down the field, having qualified very well. It's coming up on Nils Nins. Nils caught a bit of dirt there, going up towards Sunset. I think Oljars will have much better speed. Take it around the outside of Sunset, around the outside of the Beeswax Racing, Aston Martin. And Oljars takes 10th place. I have to hope he's out of position there from having pitted, having qualified very well in second. Lap 18. It's Lucas Ziga this time closing in on Nils Nins. Ziga well up in the uh, top five. Another difference in speed there. Nils looked like he was going in slow motion as the Ferrari came sweeping past him. So Nins passed for seventh place. Ziga takes that seventh. Nins down to eighth. Looks to be carrying some damage. I know he loves Kailami. He tells me he loves coming here every week. I think he's asked for special requests to the organisers of Apex Online Racing to include Kyle Army Moore. That and Bathurst, he loves them both. On lap 18, it's Brandon Baker coming together with Pablo Loro. And Pablo just come out of the pits there. Not sure if they was coming together, but Baker ends up pointing the wrong way. He drops a number of places down the field. Dami Ayo just went through shot, and Dami Ayo was in 15th, so looking like Baker may have dropped from 10th to 16th, or 15th, sorry. Lap 20, still about another 13 laps to go and Domingo Tonzetic and Matt O'Brien. Domingo looking for a, a way through, he's got a lot of speed coming down towards the mine shaft. Catches a little bit of grass but keeps it together. Goes through the crocodiles but goes quite wide in the crocodiles, that may allow Matt back through then. Side by side but it looks like Tonzetic's going to hold on to that one. Nils Nins in the background there, hoping to pick up some scraps, but we not going to come off. And we join Watson coming out of the pits on lap 21. And Nora Susjak must be about to come through. And there he is, the blue Ferrari right in front of Watson. Pack very close together there. So a lot of fighting left to do, and the yet again, just like Imola, a lot of the cars very close on pace and performance. Making some very tight racing all the way through the hour of the race. Nils Nins again, trying to catch up with Matt O'Brien to go around the hairpin at the top of the course. Just to get a lot more speed coming down the hill towards Mineshaft. And he's got the inside past the Nissan, so Nils makes a pass. And secures that 20th place. Still recovering from pointing the wrong way at the start of the race. Has to come together with another driver. It's lap 25 and it's Dami Ayo closing in on Dan Smith. Dan currently in 11th place, three and a half seconds behind John Becker. Dan's catching a lot of grass there, went wide. That'll give Dami Ayo an excellent opportunity to get up the outside of Sunset. And he does make that work, gets ahead of the Lexus. So 
of a racing sim tools sim tools .com. driver drops back one place to 12 dami io twg goes through On lap 25, catch up with Master of Dirt, also trying to kill us in on Dan Smith. Dan's on an unusual line there, lots of loose speed going for the hairpin. And Master of Dirt, the Audi makes that one look quite easy, goes around the outside. So Dan Smith losing a couple of places in one lap, he won't be pleased with that. On lap 26. And it's Wilfred Bajil being attacked by John Becker as they come through Crocodiles and up towards Cheetah. Bajil catches that big sausage curb, throws him straight into the gravel trap. John Becker just slides right through, takes that eighth place away from Bajil. That sausage curb, deadly to anybody who catches it, caught a number of drivers out in this race. John Becker, well clear there, good, good lead already. Lap 27, pretty close, and it's Colin McCarthy again and Nils Nins to go through, and it's Nils who catches the big sausage curve this time. Doesn't go as deep into the gravel trap as Bajil. Conor McCarthy is not going to be asked twice. Gets around the outside of Ingui, and they're side by side going down the start finish line. But I think Connell is in front. Pleased with that one, but he won't be pleased being down in 19th position. Up 29, getting very close to the end of the race now, and it's XFSR Torpedo all the way up to seventh, being attacked by John Becker. Just make it extra difficult here. They're both in the same livery Lexus, but John is in the 114 car, and Torpedo's in the 69 car. And Becker's made that work, is it? Into sunset ahead of Torpedo carry more speed so torpedo drops one position lap 29 it's Ayo and Bajil side by side as they go in towards sunset I think Bajil's got the advantage there but can Ayo carry more speed around the outside still neck and neck ayo has got there first Ayo takes the position from Bajil, gets it into ninth. Bajil in tenth. And on lap 30, getting even closer towards the end of the race, it's Fresh and McCarthy. And Nils Nins again. Nils is getting through there ahead. McCarthy caught the sausage curb. Got his car a little bit loose, and that will have allowed Fresh to get through in the 53 Ferrari. So lots of exchanges of places there. That'll be Nils in 19, fresh to 20th, McCarthy down the 21st. On lap 32, getting very, very close to the end of the race, it's Sawas, who's had a very up and down race, and Orjaz, who qualified in second. Side by side as they go through the first corner. Zolciaz who emerges in front, Saras behind, and that looks like Ziga in fifth place currently. Also hot on the heel, so a close race all the way to the finish line. On lap 33, Zolciaz still being attacked by Saras. Same place just a lap later. Zolciaz gets defensive. Oh, and they come together. Was that an incident that needs to go to the Stewarts? It looked like Sarwaz may have caught the back of Oljaz, put him heavy into the wall. But they were weaving around the track, fighting for position. So I don't know what the drivers will be deciding. What may or may not need to go to the Stewarts. But it's Matt Cooley again, just like last week at Imola, who's clear of the rest of the field, just 1.8 seconds clear of Fodor in second place. But Matt Cooley will take the victory at Kailami. Fodor looks to be coming in in second and third place currently with Sarwas but it may well depend on what the stewards decide after Sarwas and Oljar seem to come together on the start finish straight with just a couple of laps to go but Cooley again taking maximum points from the seventh round
And moving on to potential contenders for driver of the week. Uh, we've got three drivers this week to have a look at. First is myself. 833 Beeswax Racing, qualified in 27th. And at the start of the race, going down the start finish straight, not quite wide, definitely three wide, maybe even four. So ever cautious going into the first corner, which tightens considerably. It caught a number of drivers out. Cars were scattered around the track. And I'm very lucky as Pushjack's Ferrari shot across the rear of the 833 car, but didn't get collected. So going out through Sunset, still in the main pack and already moved up a number of places. Very uneventful race from there all the way up through to Lord Nem getting pretty close. 17 laps in, still not pitted and thanks to everybody else pitting all the way up to 6th place. Lord Nem though, threatening for a long time, just 1.7 seconds, 1.4 seconds behind. But never able to close the distance and make it past. Eventually, I think the highest possibly ever been into second place for the 833 car by lap 18. Matt Cooley spoiling the party, trying to do the Nils Nins tactics of going long and getting to the front of a race just by not pitting. Matt Cooley came out of the pits just ahead, so was denied by just eight seconds from leading the race for at least one lap. So Matt Cooley retaining the lead at this point. So eventually at the end of that lap, the 833 car pitted in from second. Eventually completing the pit stop and rejoining the field. Computer initially showing down at least in 15th place. That is the 21 car of Arun saying just in front. So yep, 15 for 16th. But then just a few laps later. Baker, who was just ahead, had a bad spin on the hairpin at the top of the course. And in the Beeswax Racing 833 car used the opportunity to go through. Baker rejoined. But for the rest of the race, was unable to close the gap and get past the Beeswax car. And then, in a very mysterious event, which we'll touch on later, Gained 14th place on the line. So a very high finish for Beeswax Racing 833. Started 27th and finished in 14th. But the other contestant for Driver of the Day had a very unusual start for the race, which is very proud of. This is the warm-up lap and the formation lap before the race actually starts. And XFSR Torpedo taking the leaf out of Nils Nin's books. And you have to be careful, Torpedo. Nils doesn't like it when people try and steal his spinning trophy but uh, Torpedo recovered got back on the track and it was touch and go about whether he'd be back in position before the actual start of the race but uh, thanks to the way the game goes Shikar, he was able to try and sneak into position hoping nobody else in the pack noticed that he'd been into the barriers before the race had started starting alongside the other car we've just been looking at the 833 Beeswax and at the start of the race, Torpedo very aggressive, down into free wide on the start finish straight. And we saw the incidents from the beeswax view. Torpedo was very much in there as well, but was uh, not quite so lucky. He did get a bit of a tap at the start of the race. But it wasn't, didn't appear to be too bad. And came out of the incidents on the first corner ahead. Beeswax Racing Car fighting with Jamie Ellis who's in 25th there and then a few laps later bad accident for Tripp who caught another car and that took Master of Dirt and Tripp out from in front of Torpedo so Torpedo was in 10th before that happened came out of that 8th and again just like the 833 car Torpedo went pretty long and by the 17th lap he was in 4th position as he pitted in Merging out of the pits. Computer seemed to think he was in 11th. It always takes a little while to settle down. But an empty track around him. So good, clear track to get some good times in. And we'll rejoin him on lap 28. He's in 7th place. 
And remember, this is from right down the field, all the way up to seventh, get towards the end of a race. There's a little snatch from the car there, and Becker attacks, gets through. We pick this up in the highlights. And this was the first time I think Torpedo got past in the race. Becker showing some good speed to push Torpedo down into eighth position. Next up to attack was Dami Ayo. Gonna be inside. Got a good pass. Quite possible at this point that. Uh, Torpedo's having some trouble with his tyres because he seems to keep going wide on Crocodile. Here again. Through Cheetah, he's dropped behind Bajil. So we're slowly dropping back places towards the end of the race, but finished in that ninth position. And the final contender for driver of the day was Pablo Loro. Started in 15th, which might not seem so bad, but immediately picked up a drive through penalty. So must have been out of position for the start procedure gets a drive through penalty immediately awarded by the stewards so from 15th and having to do that drive through penalty gets through the uh, mishaps on turn one in one piece but having to pit ends up nine for the end of the first lap when it's going to serve the drive through but it's really going to push him right down the field So serving that drive-through penalty right at the start of the race, the field's really close together. So it'll be right down the pack. I can see Lord Nem there in front of Pablo. So far down the field, looking like 27th position. The computer settles down, but Pablo didn't waste any time. Immediately set about trying to get past McCarthy. Caught a lot of dirt there on the inside of Sunset. He's got to barbecue side by side. Still fighting. He's got Connell in slightly the wrong position for the next left hand of Yeses. Climb up the hill. And that does eventually look to pay out. As he come up towards the hairpin bend at the top of the course. Carthy trying to hang on, but not there. And eventually Pablo gets through. Go through Cheetah. Loro catches the big sausage curb, goes into the dirt and all that hard work undone, and he goes even further backwards. Looks like he's behind Tonzetic there. So I'll be into 28th place at the start of the race. So a mountain to climb. Immediately starts setting about Tonzetic into first turn, gets on the inside. Forces Tonsetic pretty wide. And allows him to carry more speed through the next set of corners. Up to barbecue. This clears the way to get to sunset way ahead of the McLaren. Start trying to close the gap up to Hushak McCarthy, but again catches the curb. Full 360. And that was again was on Cheetah from the looks of things. A little bit further around that lap. So Loro keeps moving a long way forward, then making a, a mistake and going backwards again. So a very eventful race for Loro. And he's behind Tonsetic again. It's a little bit wide there. But dives up the inside of both Hushjak and Tonsetic. Two cars in one corner. Looks like Hushjak spun out there or spun by himself. One of the two. Loro makes it work and gets through and will be into 90 position. Still early doors in the race. And then Lord Nem, is that in front of him? Caught a lot of curb there, a little bit of the grass. Created an excellent opportunity for Loro to get through. At this point, at this point of the race, that was for 11th position. 
catches up on the beeswax racing car next, as we saw a little earlier. Goes around the outside of Sunset. This time Laurel was it all the way up to 10th. Remember from virtually last in the race, he's way down in 27th, 28th place. Then comes in for his pit stop on lap 17. And he merges. Rejoining the pack. And that's Baker, I can see on the outside. Baker's in 12, so some good positions been made up. Then it's unclear, it's out of shot, what happens, but it looked like they may have made contact with Baker. Going into the first corner, span him out, so could well be in trouble with the stewards. And then there's a very, very mysterious, looked uh, like a different locks fair or something, but I assume that is some sort of net code issue that Loro experienced. Spun him out on barbecue, put him into the gravel trap, has to recover, so was in 8th place when that happened, but I think I saw Bajil and Becker go through. So by this point, he's dropped back down again to 13th, having a battle with Dan Smith. Down towards Sunset, but it looks like he's past Dan Smith there. So Laurel up and down the field like a yo-yo. Qualified 15th, down to 28th, up to 4th at one point. And just ahead of him, Master of Dirt catches the uh, dirt quite badly and spins the car, goes off the track and that clears the way for Loro to take 11th position. Difficult race for Master of Dirt, lost a number of places there. Unless Dan Smith's still behind him. But that put Loro into 10th, just behind XFSR Torpedo. And that is where he finished the race from qualifying 15th down the 28th and finishing in 10th. And as for Sawas, in one of the more dramatic events of this race, just like Tugarin last season at Misano, Sawas ran out of fuel on the last lap from third position. He had to recover to the pits. He could not finish the lap to get across the finish line. So that put him way down in the final standings, I think to 16th. I moved everyone ahead of him up one place, which is why a number of cars showed one place further up right at the end of the race. So looking at the official results following that disaster for Sarwas on the last lap, Matt Cooley from McVitie's Hobnobs comes in first again, takes 100 points. Rob Fodor, this time avoided any incidents, came in in second place, taking 90 points. Luca Ziga from the 488 team got third. Jamie Ellis was fourth in the end. Marcin Oljas, after qualifying so well, finished down in fifth. John Becker of the FTW Racing Sim Tools.com team got sixth. Dami Ayo of TWG Racing got seventh. Wilfred Bajil got to eighth. That'll have a big impact on the Drivers' Championship, I think, because Bajil was in second on that table. XFSR Torpedo did a sterling drive to get to ninth. Pablo Loro. I mean, up and down the field, as we've just seen, got to 10th. Dan Smith of FTW Racing, RacingSimTools.com, got to 11th place. Uh, Steve Bezik, the A3 free car of Beeswax Racing, got to 14th in the end. And I think in the end, we have to give driver of the day to XFSR Torpedo. Coming back from a spin on the formation lap with very, very minimal number of mistakes, managed to get to 9th place. Pablo Loro did a good drive, but it was littered with mistakes that kept putting him back down the field. and possibly on a couple of entanglements with a few of the drivers. And Steve Bezik did very well, but uh, didn't score enough positions to compare to Torpedo. And uh, so that is my verdict for this week. Please leave your comments in the chats below if you disagree or if you think one of the other drivers deserve to get driver of the day. Looking at the second half of the field at the finish. Trip from Vitis Hopnobs finished in 20th. He was doing well at the start of the race, but had a number of mishaps that put him down the field. Nils Nins of Beeswax Racing finished in 21st. Saw him going backwards a few times, his favourite hobby. And uh, I'd say yet again to any of the Apex Online officials who were watching, Nins loves it at Kailami. He tells me he wants to see it every season along with Bathurst. It's his favourite track. Colin McCarthy finished 22nd behind Nils after they had quite a good battle throughout the race. Andre Kuchar of Merckx and Recreation was 23rd. Lord Nem from Phoenix Racing finished 25th. Radomir Kozierski for Phoenix Racing was down in 31st. Ivor Kangset 
this week seems to have a really difficult time at uh, Kailami. He finished in 27th. Sindrik Ragnarsson of TWG Racing was down in 33rd. And Ben Hitchcock of the 488 team confirmed he had a bit of an injury this week. Tried to race, but unfortunately had to pull out after just a couple of laps and was unable to finish. So moving on to the Drivers' Championship as we come away from Kailami. Second victory on the trot for Matt Cooley. Gives him another haul of 100 points, which gives him a lead of 156 points now over second place, Wilfred Bajil. Wilfred's going to have to hope for victory in the last two rounds to have any chance, really, of knocking Matt away from the championship lead. Luca Ziga of the 488 team, with a good result in third, moves up one place to third on the table. Ivor Kangsep had a disaster to match that of Suzuka, finishing 27th in the, tonight's race. That moves him down one place into fourth. Robert Fodor, good result in second, moves him up three places into fifth. John Becker of RacingSimTools.com had a decent finish, moves him up one place into sixth place. Hendrik Sawas had a difficult race, finished in 16th and drops down two spots to seventh. Jamie Ellis had a good result, finishing in fourth and moves back into the top ten in eighth place. Ex-FSR Torpedo also had a good drive as we saw earlier. He also moves back into the top 10 of the Drivers' Championship. Ben Hitchcock had a difficult time for the 488 team and had to pull out the race owing to an injury. He drops four places down as a result of that failure to finish. Looking at the team's championship, Mavitis Hobnobs lead the table. Matt Cooley and Tripp have 595 points now. 59 points clear of the 488 team of Lucas Zieger and Ben Hitchcock. Big gap now of 84 points to FTW Racing, RacingSimTools.com. Dan Smith, John Becker need some good results in the final two rounds to close that gap. It's a big gap of nearly 200 points to the fourth place team of Beeswax Racing. Nils Nins and Steve Bezik moving ahead of Big Boatlick. Paul Hinsley and Paul Scott brought back down to fifth, having neither of them raced for this round. TWG Racing remain in sixth. Dami Ayo and Sindri Ragnarsson. Phoenix Racing remain in 7th, Lord Nam and Radomir Kozurski. And rounding out the team's championship, Mercs of Recreation in 8th place, Vasily Amidlas and Andre Kucha. That concludes the action from Kailami for this round of the Season 6 Championship. Next round in a week's time will be Zandvoort in Holland. The weather conditions, uh, well it's daytime but it's described as a good chance of rain and the track is going to be very cool so managing those tyres and getting heat into those tyres is going to be something the driver is going to have to manage quite well. Matt Cooley goes into the final two rounds with a good strong lead on the Drivers' Championship and also his team, the Vitis Hobnobs, have a strong lead in the Teams' Championship. So in either one of those competitions, it's going to take good drives from other drivers and a poor drive from Matt and Tripp to give anybody else a chance to take away those two championship leads. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the highlight show. Conflicting things in real life have made this one a bit tricky to get out, but we will get there before the end of the season with a highlight show for both Zandvoort and the final round at Spa. There's only two rounds left. How's it all going to turn out? Please leave a comment, especially on your verdict on Driver of the Day and what you think may happen with the Drivers' Championship. I'll see you next time round. Thanks for watching and goodbye.